when you do anything in life, whether it's putting together a toy chest or it's cleaning a car or it's making something for dinner, there's always some instruction that you either have to read or that you have to learn. Nobody's just born knowing it, right? You have to, you know, read instructions online or somebody has to teach you the instructions. There's always some type of template. There's always some instructions on how to do something. Well, that's pretty much what a Jenkins file is. So a Jenkins file is a text file that contains definitions. And those definitions, when I say definitions, think template, think instructions. So it tells a pipeline what it should be doing and what services and plugins it should be interacting with. So for example, let's say you're deploying some code to, I don't know, Azure or AWS or even on-prem. Well, there's gonna be some plugins that are there, of course, and we've went through plugins in the plugin section and we understand all of that. And the Jenkins file would contain those plugins or at least pointers to those plugins. So the Jenkins file knows, hey, I need to be able to use that plugin or that service or that credential or something along those lines. So as you can see here, we actually have a little screenshot of a Jenkins file and what it actually is. And we're going to go over what each of these mean. But what I want you to keep in mind is, you know, this is kind of what it looks like. You got a keyword and then right underneath that keyword, you got a couple brackets. And then within those brackets, you tab over, you know, either one tab or four spaces. And then you start to define what things look like. So this is in short, you know, what a Jenkins file actually looks like as you're writing it and as you see it. So let's go over each of the pieces that we saw, you know, in that screenshot of a Jenkins file. So first you have your pipeline and you're always defining some pipeline. It could be just a CI pipeline. It could be just a CD pipeline. It could be a CI CD pipeline. But really what that pipeline is, is it's the task that you're trying to accomplish. So let's say, I don't know, you're trying to build some code or maybe you just want to build and test some code, or maybe you want to build, test, and turn it into an artifact, or maybe you want to go through the entire pipeline. So you want to build the code, you want to run your automated tests, you want to run your linters, and you want to deploy it to the specific location. Maybe that's on-prem, maybe that's in the cloud, maybe that's a container. Point is the pipeline of the task that you are trying to accomplish. The node is the build agent. So in the next section coming up, we will be going over build agents and what they are, why we use them, etc. But really what I want you to think of when you hear build agent right now is the place that runs your pipeline. Next, you set up your stages. So you have a dev stage, you have a staging stage, or sometimes people call it UAT. And then you could have a prod stage. You could have a QA stage, a bunch of different stages, whatever you call them, whatever your organization calls them. Point being, you set up those stages of work inside of your pipeline. And then finally, you have steps. So the steps are the work that's being done in the pipeline. So for example, you might have a step to deploy code to Azure or to AWS. It all depends on what you want to be doing, but the point is that you have those steps available. And again, those steps could even be just for your CI pipeline. So for example, Maybe you have just a CI pipeline and you have just steps in there to test the code and then to build the code. That's perfectly fine as well. Now, a quick note here on multi-stage pipelines. So if you're not familiar with multi-stage pipelines, it's one Jenkins file, multiple stages. So again, those stages could be dev, staging, and prod. Now you could have a Jenkins file that just does one of these stages. So for example, you might have a Jenkins file that just deploys to dev, or just deploys to staging, or just deploys to prod, or you could have a multi-stage pipeline, which takes dev, staging, and prod, and puts them into one Jenkins file, and then you deploy to all of those environments. Now the cool thing about multi-stage pipelines is, let's say for example, you have dev, staging, prod, and you try to deploy to dev, which is the first stage, and it fails. Well, guess what? If it fails, you're not going to move forward onto the new stage. Instead, it's gonna fail and then you're gonna go back and you're gonna fix and then you're gonna to try to deploy again. And then once it passes dev, then it'll go to staging. And once it passes staging, then it'll go to prod.